Dark Oh, Doc I see Doc Bryce is uh, Over there In his own world He's got the hood up on K97 Or Fox Sports 97 Checking its oil And kicking the tires over there Sister station Having a little trouble getting started this morning I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. Yeah, that's all right. We're going to beam you up here in just a minute. <laughs> Bring you back to uh, the real side of radio. Where the fun stuff happens. <laughs> Sports depresses me now. Well, <laughs> you ain't never lie. Oh, my, my. So, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun last night with Willie Nelson and friends. Family family yeah. yeah family well you know i mean there he had some friends up there too well that, that kid that was sitting next to him yeah it would be his son right yeah yeah did you hear him sing solo i did and you, were and you, were you not in awe i i was i i liked his original song uh the bs song yeah but i was thinking of his voice though the way he sings and it's like he sounds just like his father <laughs> absolutely it made me want to pull a mom and go, you sound just like your father. Oh, my God. <laughs> he probably got it from his father. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, so, I guess Arkansas won last night, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, they did. And everybody let me know, too. Guess that means they'll be uh, playing again today, huh? Yeah, they go uh, pregame's 2.30, uh, first pitch is at 3. <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah everybody Don let Bryce. me very excited yeah. about the upcoming Razorback Day. Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, we were waiting for the uh, uh, show to start last night because El Dorado appreciates my business. Yes, they do. And, um, you know, I, I, I went to, uh, I, I'm just going to give them a plug, man. Main Street Pizza down there. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So, uh, yeah, I obviously had a brand new waitress, and she was such a sweetheart. All right. I mean, you know, she she was trying really, really hard. Uh, problem was, she was trying my patience. Um, no, I'm teasing. I'm being overly critical. The young lady was very sweet, but everything around her just kept falling apart. I had to ask for a pizza box, right, to take leftover pizza with. Mm-hmm. And uh, she brings me out this box, and I open it, and there's already uh, half-eaten crust inside. <laughs> I was like, uh, excuse me. Can I have a new box? So, uh, anyway, it was great pizza, and the young lady was a great server. It was just a uh, comedy of errors. What was it, like her first day or something? I, I believe it probably was. And, uh, what you know, I am typically not the greatest customer to uh, experience your first day with. Yeah. But... <laughs> Well, I expect customer service to be a certain way. And, well, you know, I mean, I was very, very sweet. My wife was even impressed. She was like, I can't believe you did that so nicely. I said, well, I wasn't at home. Couldn't rightly fire the wait staff. Anyway, all right, so uh, we did have a lot of fun. Saw a bunch of people we knew. Had a lot of fun down in El Dorado last night for Willie Nelson and family. And uh, the next event coming up that we are going to be at is the Battle of the Bands. Well, I mean, you know, I'll be at another one for our sister station, Magic 104.5, before then. But for uh, the country and rock stations, oh, that's right. We don't have one of those anymore. No, we got Doc, rid of it. Doc got rid of it. No, it was, yes, it, was it was all Doc, man. He said, you know, we need a sports station over here. No. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know. That and then, you know, don't your you buddy, put that evil on me. Your buddy Doc Bryce also said, you know, news talk is really trending. No. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, that's how we ended up where we are. And that is Doc Bryce at yesradioworks.com. It's time for the round table. See how I did that? Mm-hmm. I just kind of flowed right into it. Huh? Flowing right into it. I yeah, tell you, you know, like the Trinity, okay? Uh, let's see, the roundtable brought to you in part by our friends at Flaming Pig Barbecue. You know, I, I've seen our friends at, at the Flaming Pig Barbecue on the Facebook, mm-hmm. and apparently they are motor scootering. 
having a lot of fun, taking pictures everywhere. Oh yeah, they're 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 out and about on the road. So uh, yeah, I guess that means no barbecue anytime soon for us. Uh, probably not. No. All right, you know what? I'm gonna quit talking about them then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, you're done around these here parts. Yeah, I tell you, you know, what. <laughs> get your butt back down here and open that restaurant, and then we'll talk <coughs> about you again. SAU Tech, they've got job openings and career opportunities and class opportunity. You know what? They've got class. They've got a lot of class Yeah. at SAU Tech. Class. Lots of class. Dr. J, man. You know, he's a snazzy dresser, too. He is. You know, I mean, I, I don't know what's wrong with the people around him, but, you know, I mean, he always, you know, makes them look like they came to Club Med or something. I don't know. Oh, he's just a very sophisticated guy. He, well, I mean, you know, he's a nice guy, too. I'll give him that. He's got his own radio station, though, and he doesn't like me anymore. You know, it's funny. Since he's gotten that radio show. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can't get him to, to come by and say hi. or anything. No, but I see he's got plenty of time to be on his radio show. Oh, yeah. Show. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's all right. Over there, me. over there with his guests and everything and bringing people in and and interviewing and stuff and and we're like please come talk to us on our show and he's like ah, yeah, yeah you know I, i'll see if i can pencil you in yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well <laughs> yeah, okay. you know i mean going over and uh you know say hi on sau tech.edu go rockets st john's place 1400 Highway 79, 167 Bypass in Fort Ives, Washington Nursing and Rehab, 1411 Country Club Road in Camden. They are the choice for all of your rehabilitation and long-term care needs, and they provide award-winning short-term therapy services, too. You can reach St. John's Place by dialing 870-352-2104 and Washington Nursing and Rehab, 836-4111. Dr. Jericasia Smith and staff over at First Choice Family Care, located at 476 Hospital Drive in Camden, 870-800-9002, the number to dial. Dr. Smith and her staff, they will help take the pain away from that process of finding a new doctor. Good morning, Dr. Smith. Good morning. You, you can grab that thing and pull it around. I I won't. Yeah, it, it's Doc's ears that we worry about. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to learn more about Dr. Smith and what all she offers, you know, the first stop would be the website, myfirstchoicecare.com. Then you can also follow them on Facebook. Yep. And uh, did you do something with your hair? I did. Well, I didn't want you to think I wouldn't notice, all right? So, uh, hey, man, she's looking pretty sharp today. That, that, that old fireman she's guy. She's actually dressed up. Boy, I'm going to tell you, that old fireman guy, you know, he better watch out. She might be trolling. She know, she, know, she doesn't look like she's having a rough day at the office. 870-800-9002 if you want a date with Dr. Smith. No. <laughs> no. Oh, my. She says, no, I think Trent, this, you this is not that a, app, a, okay? <laughs> Trent gets a discount on this one. Uh, you might have to get a permission slip for that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, as long as Trent's They come for the discount, chaperone. You, know. you have a chaperone, so, uh, too. <laughs> you, well, you know, a couple of shadows. We'll, and we'll a, sneak in the other Dr. Smith and, in town. And a it's really Dr. Or... Hayden Smith you're getting the deal. <laughs> <laughs> We're brought to you by OCMC's Chemical Dependency Unit. They'd like to remind you that you're not alone. Addiction is a tough thing to get past, man, and, and you don't have to walk that road alone. Get the help you need. I don't care where you get the help. Just get the help you need. If you want professional help, you got to want the help, all right? You'll never get better if you don't want the help. Yeah. But if you want the help, I mean, you're on, why wouldn't you? 870-836-1289, 800-232-1289. All calls are confidential. I'd say the first step is really always admitting that there's a problem. Yes, that's, for some reason, people with problems, it's impossible no, to admit me. that there's a problem. Well, you, you, you're crazy. Right. Yeah. No, we're not crazy. We know who is. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mitch Lowe's Body. I'm not going to preach, all right? I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. Auto body and collision repair framework. Glass work and refinishing. All accidents, large or small. Mitch Lowe's can handle it all. Located at 2025 California. If you get put in the ditch, just call Mitch. 837-2560. Everybody's antiques in El Dorado. We were down in El Dorado partying with Willie Nelson and family last night. El Dorado, appreciate your business. Get on down there and check out everybody's antiques. 120 booths, 31,000 square feet. Corner of Bradley and West Hillsboro. You can't miss it. Shop them online, everybody'santiques.com. Call them up, 870-875-1444. 
I bet they've got Prince Albert in a can. Cabin Rural Health Services. Cabin's a private nonprofit corporation there to help the folks in a bunch of different counties of rural south and southwestern Arkansas. If you want to learn more about Cabin, go to their website, cabun.org, or call them up, 870-798-4299, and buy stories, floor, and carpet where you'll find quality that you can count on since 1958. They sell cleaning products for your flooring and have a variety of flooring in stock if you need it in a hurry. Stop by the showroom, 2004 Lorraine. Stories, floor, and carpet, 870-862-9446. All right, guys and gals, y'all hang out. Give me just a minute to uh, try to reorganize, and we'll be back. It's time to check the Radio Works South Arkansas Community Bulletin Board. If your nonprofit group has an event you would like to be included in the Community Bulletin Board, please email the information to CamdenRadio1 at Hotmail.com or fax to 836-9500. Please include times, dates, contact number, and address of the event. Please send at least five to seven days prior to the event to give us ample time to properly advertise. Local Sports Update. Hello, sports fans. With a look at local games and scores, I'm Kelly Blair. Well, the Arkansas Razorback team lived to fight in yet another day of the College World Series as the Diamond Hogs slipped past Old Miss in a national semifinal game by the score of 3-2 to two Wednesday night. This now sets up a final elimination game between the Omahogs and the Rebels as they will meet in the if-necessary game at 3 p.m. this afternoon. The winner will advance to the College World Series finals to face Oklahoma while the loser is done for the season. Against Old Miss on Wednesday, the Razorbacks took an early lead in the top of the second when Chris Lanzilli hit a solo leadoff homer to left field only to have Kemp Alderman homer for Old Miss in the bottom of the frame to tie the game at 1 to 1. Brady Slavens then led off the 5th inning with a homer for Arkansas before the Diamond Hogs then pushed their lead to 3 to 1 after Caden Wallace doubled and Michael Turner drove him in with a single in the 8th inning. The extra run turned out to be critical as Old Miss was able to score one run after loading the bases with no outs in the bottom of the ninth, but relief pitcher Zach Morris was finally able to get the final out for Arkansas to give them the victory. Hagen Smith got the win for the Razorbacks after pitching the first five innings of the contest, allowing only one earned run off two hits while walking four and striking out eight. Wallace, Lanzilli, and Slavens all had two hits each for Arkansas, who will now send ace right-hander Connor Nolan to the mound tonight against the Rebels' Dylan DeLucia in the winner-take-all bracket final. Game time has been moved up to 3 p.m. today with pregame radio coverage starting at 2.30. So tune in to Fox Sports Camden 97.1 FM so you can listen to all the action while you are at work or listen to Arkansas broadcaster Phil Ellison provide play-by-play while watching the game and listening in on the Radio Works app. Now to wrap it up for now with your sports update, I'm Kelly Blair. I'm the best there is at what I do and what I do is sports. Good Thursday morning, everybody. It's going to be sunny and hot today. Temperatures near 99. Heat index values as high as 103. Tonight, partly cloudy skies. Overnight low near 73. For Friday, sunny and hot with temperatures near 99. Then on Friday night, clear skies in 76. Saturday, sunny and hot. 101. Sunday, slight chance it rains sunny and hot with temperatures near 100. Out of the Radio Works Weather Center, I'm JJ. Good morning, South Arkansas. It's time for the Washtenaw River Report for Thursday, June 23rd, starting out with the river in Camden. The current gauge reading is 11.85 feet in Arkadelphia. The current gauge reading is 8.52 feet. And at Thatcher Lock and Dam, the current gauge reading is 77.44 feet. And at Morrow Bay State Park, the gauge reading is at 75.2 feet. Heat advisories are in effect from noon today to 7 p.m. this evening. Heat index values up to 105 are expected with isolated areas near 110. Portions of north central and northwestern Louisiana, south central and southwest Arkansas, and east and northeast Texas are considered in the heat advisory zone. Know the signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Anyone overcome by heat should be removed to a cool and shaded location. Heat stroke is an emergency. Call 911. Reliability of this forecast is based on current and forecasted river and weather conditions from the National Weather Service in Little Rock. Have a great week and be safe. All righty, we are back on the round table. 
So, you know, I mean, I was talking just then on uh, the River Report about the dangers of heat stroke and uh, all of that neat stuff because the entire southern half of the United States is under a heat advisory right now. Man, that's just for wusses, man. <laughs> uh, Real man could be out there and just take that heat. No, you can't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, I tell you what, real man, we're gonna take your air conditioning away. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> No, because uh, I've got to go out there and work on that generator, and that generator's under direct sunlight all day long from sunup till sundown. Uh-huh. And I'm going to have a tent over me, uh-huh. and I'm going to have a wall to keep the sun blocked from one side, because I don't want to get sunburned on one side. It'll look weird, you know, tan on one <laughs> side, light on the other. And then I'm going to have my little fan out there with me blowing some nice cool air. I am not going to be blowing on you. And then I'm going to have seven gallons of water so that way I can, uh, you know, if I need to get some water on me to cool down, I can well, we'd, we'd just be happy if you took a shower anywhere. Well, I mean, you know, you, you got to, dude, the, it, it's so bad, though, because, I mean, even last night, it was so hot and sticky and so nasty out there that um, my eyelids were sticking together. Yeah, I noticed that when I uh, walked by Doc Bryce, who did not bother to get up, you know, I mean, uh, didn't bother to say hi or anything like that. You know, I had to walk over and kick his feet and say, hey. Are you alive? No, I was feeling like a fat walrus, you know, stuck <laughs> up on a dock. <laughs> Look, looked a lot like a fat walrus, too. Uh, they had the Mr. Tents all set up last night. Did you take advantage of that? No, because the one I got just tinkled on me. It didn't mist or nothing. Well, I was that say, wasn't the Mr. You, you, you probably need to keep that one to yourself there, Bryce. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got Dr. Smith in the house, and... We're under heat advisories, and it's real easy to get overheated and not really know that you're getting overheated. So uh, what would be some of the warning signs that we need to watch out for when we're dealing with extreme temperatures? Well, one of them being that um, just knowing, like, if you're at risk to begin with. Uh, Because if you're already at risk and you know that you would be at risk, you're going to behave differently in the heat. Um, and the biggest thing I'll say is that it is hot enough out there. If you do not regularly work outside throughout the year, that you can't all of a sudden go outside and tolerate the heat. Now, people that have been working outside every day since it was cool have acclimatized more to the heat. They're still going to be sensitive to it, but not as sensitive as someone that is used to working in air conditioning. So, you know, that doesn't mean that you don't need to be aware but at the same time, you know, I mean, you you, you have a little bit better chance and uh, uh, ability to stay you're, out there for a little longer. You're going to tolerate it a little better. Okay. Than somebody that's not, that's not got used to the heat. Right. Now, see, when I was working on the roofs back in the day, uh, you know, it was nothing for me to be out in that 120 degree temperature all day long. Right. Uh, you know, and even hotter on the roofs. So, you know, I mean, but nowadays... I can't even walk to the car, man. I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, where's my air conditioner? Yeah. Oh, blow, wind, blow. <laughs> right. And so that being acclimatized is super important. If you, if it is strenuous exercise, then that's going to be a risk factor. More strenuous than you're used to. Um, like trying to take up a new exercise hobby that's outside right now is probably not the greatest idea. So you're saying I should not take up jogging today? If you do, I would just do it in the really early morning times when it's cooler. Um, and even in the late evening, it's still pretty hot even after the sun goes down. But it's significantly cooler. Um, and so you could try that. But being out of shape, poor physical fitness is going to be a risk factor for having heat-related illness. Okay. Um, being overweight or obese is going to be a risk factor for heat-related illness. It, getting dehydrated is going to increase your risk for heat-related illness. And then um, having other stuff on. So depend on what you have to do outside. If you have to have protective gear, you know, if you're carrying things, like obviously increasing the load of energy you're having to do outside is going to put you more at risk for heat-related illness. Okay. So uh, what are some of the signs that, that... Oh, or if you've had a cold. If you've been recently sick to begin with, and even if you don't feel like it was a bad illness, having some low-level immune 
exertion is going to put you more at risk. Well, your body's a little, a little more wore out already, you know. Right. I mean, and, uh, you know, anything that you do is just going to be like adding another straw to that camel's back. Yes, and then certain medications can put you more at risk. Okay. So that's that's going to be certain, like, um, anti-seizure type things. Um, fluid pills can put you more at risk. So if you have to take Lasix, furosemide, or one of your blood pressure medicines is like hydrochlorothiazide or HCTZ, those types of things can put you more at risk. Um, excessive drinking, so uh, alcohol on top of that. So if you've had a cold and you're drinking and you're going out to sit on a boat for however long, oh, uh, you make it yeah, related. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, you might want to rethink some of this stuff. Um, certain decongestions, antihistamines can cause certain conditions, um, put you more at risk. Um, treatments for stimulants such as treatments for uh, ADHD, that type of thing, can put you more at risk. So knowing if you are more at risk than other people is going to be important. So, you know, if you're not healthy as a uh, ox, then you might be more at risk. Now, should everybody see their doctor uh, before going into the summer and deciding to change their life? Um, I think it all depends. If you're if you're trying to adopt a new exercise routine and say you're on some of these medications and things, it may be well worth seeing your doctor before starting a new exercise routine, especially in the summertime, um, and especially if you're planning on doing that outside. But um, as far as just seeing them before being outside, I think it's just more about knowing your boundaries, listening to your body, and not doing something that you shouldn't be doing. You just quit to being try to stupid. Well, I think it's actually pride. You used to do it, and you're gonna do it again. All right, and then I'm she, gonna see you in the ER. She, she kind of nailed me on that. <laughs> one, right? no, I've been doing this for years. You know, you grab that engine blocks, boy. So, and then the. Uh, one of the other risk factors is being a male, you're more likely to have heat-related illness than a female. So I don't know why that is. Well, I can tell you I why that, that is. I mean, you know, well, you know, guys are stupid. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're going to be like, no, nah, I'm fine. <laughs> no, nah, we're too yeah. macho for that. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to try this. <laughs> I, I can drink more beer than you can, okay? You know, I mean, uh, um, you know, and these are things that will dehydrate you exceptionally fast, uh, you know, the, any kind of alcohol. Yes. All right, and uh, soda pops, not necessarily the best thing for you while you're out in the sun. It's not water. You have to drink enough water to stay hydrated, and the soda has enough other stuff in it that it's not hydrating. And what about these energy drinks that everybody's so gaga about? Energy drinks are like sports drinks. You're both. So energy drinks, again, um, it's not going to, there's enough other things in it that it's, it's not going to be hydrating. Um, you need something that's majority water, um, something that's less dense in electrolytes and things than your own bodily fluids t- for your body to absorb it, right? Um, because if it's higher dense th- uh, in, like, salt and potassium and all those electrolytes, it can actually dehydrate the tissues around it because that water follows where things are more dense, if that makes sense. We're talking about osmosis. So we're getting Ooh. real scientific this wow. morning. Wow, you know So what? carry a salt lake with you. Um, it's more. It's more about ocean water, huh? <laughs> it's more about the the increase. The further you get away from water, the more stuff that you have in it. Water is going to be absorbed very quickly into cells that are dehydrated because those cells lack a little bit of water, and so the the stuff that's in those cells is more concentrated, and it draws that water into the cell, right? that it has a pulling factor to that. And so when you're drinking something that has a lot of electrolytes and things in it, it's not actually causing that water to be driven into the cell because there's a lot of ions and things already in that liquid, if that makes sense. Sure, so it's, it's like building water, a barrier around it that, you know, I mean, won't allow it to be moisturized. Um, it's it's If you have something that's, you know, got 10% salt in it, and a solution that just has water and put a membrane between them. Water will be drawn into to make those two attempting to make those two things equal in in osmolality. And so that's what's happening. You're when you're out in the heat, your body cells have a lot of different electrolytes and proteins and things in them. And so especially when their their normal volume is a little down like early mild dehydration, 
that membrane is going to allow free water to pass into that cell trying to regulate those electrolytes, trying to even those electrolytes. And so it will be hydrating. But when you put something other than water on the other side that has salt and potassium and different electrolytes in it, sugar has a drawing effect. And so you can actually dehydrate the cell more because that sugary substance has a lot more sugar in it. And if it's trying to regulate to make that equal, it's going to shift water out of the cell, actually. So you can actually worsen dehydration of the on a microscopic level by drinking things that don't have enough water in them. So, you know, we, we see uh, your Gatorades and your Powerades and, uh, you know, the, these styles of drinks mm-hmm. that they advertise are there to put the electrolytes that you need back in your body. Do they work? Right. Um, you are not going to be deficient in electrolytes. There's just, our diet is varied and most people like enough salt that there's just no way you're going to be deficient in electrolytes. Now, if you are pouring sweat, then maybe do one of those about every second or third bottle. So if you drink a bottle of water or two and then a bottle of Gatorade. But to just try to drink all that, again, you need that pure water, that lower density thing to drive fluid back into the cells. Now, we live in the south there, Dr. Smith. What about uh, iced tea? Um, one of the things that you're going to get into, like with the energy component of things, or with tea, soda, is that it's going to have caffeine in it. And caffeine is a stimulant, and stimulants can increase your risks. for. Um, and so even tea, and especially the sugar level in it, it's it, I would not advise it in heat. Now, if you're going to do it like at lunch when you've drank water all day and then you have something at lunch, I think that would be more reasonable. But as far as considering that for hydration, I'm going to stick with plain water. But tea's supposed to be good in the sun. They have sun tea. <laughs> all right. And, and what about unsweetened tea? I would think that it would be better just because you're going to get less of that pulling effect from all the sugar. Um, so you may actually get better hydration out of the unsweet tea. But again, it's going to have caffeine in it. And I would recommend against drinking a lot of caffeine when you're going to be out in the sun. All right. And now, as far as, you know, getting heat exhaustion or uh, just the heat overtaking your body, what are some of the warnings? That, now, we know about cramps and getting yes, dizzy. Yes, heat cramps. Uh, you know, getting dizzy and, you know, maybe uh, uh, spotty vision, maybe. Uh, you know, what, what should we be looking at? The early, early signs. The earliest, most mild, like, heat-related things are going to be, like, muscle cramps are, are common. And um, and it can just be a sign of early heat exhaustion. Um, but, and, and that's why athletes can still get those even when they're just ex- excessively active, even if it's not particularly hot outside. Uh, but you might, any time that you get into, like, situations where you're having heavy sweating um, and... The, you could be in this, and you have those other risk factors, you may be in this, and you start having cramping, you may be having that early signs of heat-related heat illness. <clears throat> heat, heat, you can, of course, some people can pass out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, you can have uh, heart racing, uh, the cramping, and especially if you start having... Um, kind of that tunnel vision or feeling that clammy skin the all of those things and, and you can also check your temperature an increase in your temperature is an early sign of that possible oncoming heat related illness so if you're feeling funky and you know that you have risk factors or you're in this super hot weather even if you don't have risk factors, apparently being a man is a risk factor. So if you have any risk factors. Oh, trust me on that one, yeah. <laughs> being a guy is most assuredly a risk factor. Now, some of the other early warning signs could include, like, a headache or, yes. you know, even uh, not being hungry when you know you normally would be hungry. And a lot of people are going to struggle with that because I, I also experience that, is that just being in this in the summertime, your appetite is going to be different than in the winter. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> so, you know, fortunately enough for me, that kind of works to my advantage because, you know, I'm trying to get my uh, bikini body back. Mm-hmm. Um, come on now. 
I know. I just felt all the Nobody eyes Nobody laughed rolled. because everyone just think, yeah, yeah, yeah get, yeah, get back in the bikini. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> you don't know nobody want to see all of that. Well, uh, you can always wear a Speedo. I mean, you don't have to have a top. I, I was, yeah. I, was I, wa- I watched this totally. Oh, no. <laughs> With the jelly roll? <laughs> yeah, I need a top. Totally aside, I just saw this comparison, and they had um, these two competing teams, the male and the female, and they were all beside each other, and then it asked you to look at their their – um, cause, uh, I forget which sport it was. Was it handball? Something that the women had to wear a bikini as part of the well, it, volleyball, uh, sand volleyball. I know. Isn't yeah. that, isn't that still the rules there, doc? What's that? In sand volleyball, don't the, uh, females still have to wear a bikini? I don't know about that. If that's the rules, but I think it's preferred. But then it. Well, it I know showed, what you prefer there, <laughs> Doug. But it showed the the men's versus the women's, and it's like the men had like full, you know, tank top, I think, and like shorts that went down to their knee, and then like their compart their their counterpart, the female team, had like the smallest like little bikini on, and it was just kind of funny to see this whole half the room having like normal clothing, and then this whole half the room is like. Huh, well, that's yeah, very it's, interesting. It, it's not a gender-specific sport. I trust think, me. I think it should be that just to emphasize how abnormal it is that they should switch it. And, like, the girls should wear the men's outfit and take a picture with the men wearing the girls' you, uh, outfit. Tr- and we'll see just how weird <laughs> that looks. Trust me on this. There's a lot of stuff on a guy that ain't going to fit into them little bikinis you girls oh, wear. Oh, you, okay? you – you check some European countries. They those men would disagree. No, those are not men. Okay, <laughs> you, know, you know. I'm just saying. All right. Yeah. Uh, dizziness, confusion, lightheadedness, um, and and all of these like milder that lightheadedness, tunnel vision, cl- feeling like clammy, uh, maybe feeling some some heart racing. Uh, those heat cramps we talked about and then like having mild elevations in your core body temperature so normal humans are about 98 degrees if you're at you know 99 something and you're feeling other symptoms this is another sign that maybe you're gonna that you need to cool off quickly and uh you know i mean so should you just dump a glass of cold water on your head or uh, that'll help (laughs) yeah no matter what, you need to start taking away some of the risks. So if you're outside, if you can, go inside. If you're exercising outside, just stopping exercising, you may be able to recover. Make sure you're out of direct sunlight, that you're drinking plenty of water. Stop and ask yourself, when's the last time I drank water? And it's like, oh, well, I need to drink a bunch of water. Because drinking cool water can really help reduce your core body temperature. Um, and and um, re- in getting wet so wetting your shirt down your hair especially your scalp we release a lot of heat through our scalps as humans and so um using your wetting your hair or your head can really help reduce your core body temperature in a quicker way i wouldn't say to jump in like an ice bucket or something because that might be extreme (laughs) we don't really want extreme changes but gradually dialing back those things that are contributing so if you're really thirsty and you're outside and you're sweating profusely, maybe you might consider sitting down under a tree for a couple of minutes and uh, enjoying yeah. a, a glass of water. Yes. Or a bottle of water or whatever. I yeah. mean, uh, hey, is bottled water better for you than tap water? Because I grew up drinking out the hose. I drink out the hose. I'm okay. You know, well, I mean, you know, I'm just there are saying, countries you know, that you can't do that, but our country is not one of them. It, so it's reasonably safe. I mean, you know, better than drinking out the river. But if you got to drink out the river, go for it. It's a whole yeah. lot better than not drinking enough water. If you're holding out for a bottle of water, then it's like you, yeah. you need water. <laughs> Dummy, drink. So okay. tap, tap water be just fine. And if you find that you're in, you know, conditions where there may be a time that you felt the need to drink from. A natural water source not a bad thing but there are a lot of different treatment options that you can keep for emergency purposes so if you're going to be out near the river and you could imagine a, a situation where you got so thirsty you felt like you need to drink water from the river like there are water treatment like emergency water treatment things that you can buy and maybe have in your vehicle that would allow you to try to make that a little bit safer 
Well, I mean, and you want to maintain safety levels. Right. It would be like an emergency type thing. I would not recommend drinking river water. Because if you get a diarrheal illness, you're about to be dehydrated. Not out this river, baby. And and actually, that's a lot of rivers. Even very clear mountain streams keep giardia, which is going to give you a terrible diarrheal illness that you can pass to your animals. Well, you know those big uh, seven-gallon blue jug things that you can get at Walmart for, like, camping? Yeah. I keep one of those on the truck Mm -hmm. because once upon a time – I actually got stuck up on Buck Knob, and that's like 2,000 feet above sea level. And one of the trees fell down and blocked the road, so I stuck up there for like hours during the summertime. And it was a good thing I had uh, that seven-gallon thing of water on there because that actually uh, kept me hydrated while I was waiting to be rescued. Yeah, having an emergency source of water in your vehicle is super, it's super good idea. And even now, like hitting these transmitter sites and stuff, I keep that on the truck. So that way, at least, uh, if nothing else, I've got a water source. Even you know, because you, you think you're going out there just for a few minutes, you know, to just kind of walk around, check on things, and then leave. And then something happens. You find out that uh, you're going to be there a little bit longer, and then uh, you start getting thirsty. Yeah. And there's no water. Yeah. And so as things kind of progress, as that, if you're if you're already past that those earlier symptoms, you may be starting to have like feeling super weak. Um, and your heart maybe start racing. Um, if you're able to check your blood pressure, you would see that it was low. You would show other signs of dehydration. You may have coordination problems. Um, so not not quite as good at the individual hand and movements or balance um, as usual. That persistent lightheadedness or possibly even having trouble walking normally. Imagine kind of failing like a sobriety test. That is coordination. And so. <clears throat> Wait, can you use that as an excuse why you failed a sobriety test? <laughs> yeah. So we, we, man, it's hot. Oh, uh, man, I'm dehydrated, you know, officer. I, mean, I, I just don't feel myself. <laughs> but when they do right? that breathalyzer, they're going to know. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not uh, blowing on nothing. Dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's mouthwash. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so you may have actually start having abdominal m- cramping and nausea, um, and those are all signs that you that your situation is getting more severe. And uh, those signs, especially if you don't have like a plan to how to get your fluids back to normal, I would consider going to the ER. And and in this situation, passing out is also a possibility at this at this kind of heat exhaustion stage. Um, and if you pass out from the heat, you should probably go to the ER. <laughs> when, when you wake up or, you know. If I mean, you see someone passed out from heat exhaustion, you should probably take them to the yeah. ER. Yeah. If you're driving down the road and you see a, a, a neighbor, you know, just laying in the front yard, maybe <laughs> there might be something wrong. Hey, pull over, you know I mean? Honk the horn. If they look at you. And they uh, wave, you know, hey. You know, you know, <laughs> they tell you going about your business, all right? Then you can go on about your business. I was going to say, you don't know. They could be tanning out there. Well, yeah. they could be, you know, typically not in blue jeans and a flannel shirt. But, uh, <laughs> you know, anyway, so uh, when should you go to the hospital for heat exhaustion? I would say once you start kind of moving past those initial symptoms, then you should consider, especially if you have any other health conditions, because I would love to say it's heat exhaustion why you passed out, but what if it was a small stroke? What if it was a small heart attack? Um, and how why you feel weird may be the heat, but there are other things that are more dangerous that the ER checks out. And so I would say that if you have those mild symptoms, I would treat them with the things that we talked about cooling off stopping exercising getting out of the heat and if those things resolve then great but if they're not resolving or you're you kind of ignored those earlier signs and you're having these more significant signs it's worth going to the er and the rehydration process can be kind of specific making sure you are getting enough electrolytes while you're rehydrating and that's something that obviously is a whole lot easier with IV. (laughs) But there are several different levels of heat exhaustion, and heat exhaustion does not mean heat stroke. No. All right? There, there is a difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. And, you know, knowing the signs is the first step in safeguarding yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, those around you, too. So, Dr. Smith, thank you. 
and I and take care of those people in your life because like I I took care of a woman just within the last few weeks that's in her third trimester pregnant and somehow felt like she was gonna walk somewhere out in this heat and she comes in and her temperature was in the like 99 range and her heart rate was through the roof and the baby's heart rate was through the roof and all we did was rehydrate her and cool her off you know and everything returned to normal so obviously like pregnancy aging multiple health conditions these people i mean please speak knowledge into their life if you see that it's like hey maybe you should be walking right now you know if somebody you love is trying to walk home from break during this and they're uh, they're in their third trimester pregnant and no let me give you a ride yeah, yeah. <laughs> give a sister a ride okay yeah. you know, turn on the air conditioner for watch them, your you grandparents know? your elderly don't let them play with your radio okay you know, <laughs> but uh you can turn on the air conditioner for them but you and, know, watch yeah, those check people. On, check on your, your about each neighbors, other. your grams, your grands. Um, you people know, at church, whoever. You exactly. Know, just make sure that you know we're kind of keeping an eye out for each other. Amen to that. All right, Doc Smith. Thank you very much. Remember, if you guys ever have a question for the doctor, it's eight three six nine five five nine, or we've got that toll free text line. Yes, five zero one three one three zero nine four four. Here you go. See, Doc Bryce, he's popping this morning. Popping, yeah. popping, popping. While I'm sitting there working on Fox, too. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> you, well, you know, I mean, the fact that you're working? Yes. Yes, okay. All right. Uh, you know, safeguard yourself, boys and girls. That is the key to a uh, longer, healthier life. And if you don't watch out for yourself and those around you, who is? All right? Just make sure that you take care of yourself. Oh, Doc- one thing I forgot. The, um, watching your urine color, if you start seeing like brown urine, go to the ER. Good sign. That, it's a sign that you're you may be having muscle breakdown from your heat related injury, and it when muscle breaks down, it can look like blood in the urine. Okay. And so, but that's a sign of what's a condition called rhabdomyolysis, and uh, that muscle breakdown it can can be a sign of kind of organ damage from the heat. Um, and so that can be a sign that you're maybe much more sick than you thought you felt. Okay. Lots of warning signs out there, and uh, your job as a human being is to pay attention and know the signs. Listen to your body. Yeah, I mean, your body will tell if you. If you're tired, take a rest. Dad, you're screwing up! <laughs> you know, your body doesn't mind letting you know. <laughs> and don't push yourselves right now. And, and this is not the place to have pride. Like, no. you are not a better person because you can operate out in this yeah, You know what? Your, your pride isn't going to make a lick of difference in the emergency room. Mm-mm. You no. Know, and, uh, we're all equal on the doctor's table. So, uh, <laughs> you know. It's the round table, boys and girls. Brought to you each and every weekday morning by our buddies out at the Flaming Pig Barbecue. Clifton and Angela on a perpetual tour right now. I'll figure out where they're going to be and when they're going to be there. And if you just can't wait... Then uh, follow them on Facebook. Call them up, 818 5984, whatever you got to do to get that Flaming Pig barbecue. SAU Tech. Tech can, you know, make you smarter and stuff. Smarter people go to tech. Huh? Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Working on a new slogan over here, okay? Uh, go to the website, sautech.edu. And learn more about what tech can do for you. Go Rockets. St. John's Place and Washington Nursing and Rehab. Reach them online, St. John's Place of Arkansas.com, Washington Nursing.com. Find out if their services are right for you. First Choice Family Care. Become a new patient by getting your new patient packet at MyFirstChoiceCare.com. Dr. Smith is a wonderful doctor, and she's even got jokes. So, you know, I mean, stop by her office and she, she'd be like, she looked at me the other day and she said, you're not pregnant. I was like, well, thanks. Cause it's I was not a really, tumor. I was really, really <laughs> worried about it. See, I told you, man, she got jokes. I told that joke and somebody didn't get it. I'm like, mm. well, that's when you just say, uh, boy, anyway. All right. <laughs> well, All right. You need to go see that other doctor. <laughs> you know, so. yeah. We'll come in here with that kind of sense here. Mm-hmm. 476 <laughs> Hospital Drive. You'll find Dr. Smith over there. Uh, she hangs out regularly. All right. So get you a new patient packet. Follow her on Facebook. Call the office, 870-800-9002. She's made one heck of a difference in my life. She'll help you, too. 
OCMC's chemical dependency unit. Addiction's bad, man. You don't have to be addicted. You didn't start life wanting to become an addict. Why stay one? You don't have to. All right? Trust me. You can step off of it. And if you need help, then by all means, get it. Wherever you got to get it, just get it. If you want professional help or if there's a loved one out there that you think needs professional help, get the advice you need by dialing 870-836-1289 or 1-800-232-1289. All calls are confidential. And the, the biggest thing is recognizing the problem. I asked somebody I know personally about how did they know that they were an alcoholic. How would they define that? Because a lot of people can be very functional. They're not losing their job. They're not divorced, you know. And he put it to me like this. He said that I always drank more than I planned on, and I always drank when I didn't plan to, right? So it wasn't when he did drink, he drank more than he anticipated, and when he wasn't planning on drinking, somehow he fi- ends up drinking. Well, and that's that's very true. I mean, you know, I I I drank you know, straight bourbon for years and years and years. Right. And one of my uh, biggest fears when I quit drinking was that I wouldn't be able right to quit drinking. Um, you know, fortunately enough for me, I was able to do it on my own. I didn't require assistance, but not everybody can do that and different people there's a lot of different reasons why people drink and even if two people drink the same amount their bodies may be different in that one can become chemically dependent on it where where they will have dysfunction in their body when they try to stop and then the other doesn't at all so knowing just recognizing the problem is the first step and, and any any treatment program would tell you the same thing. It's just being able to recognize that there may be problematic usage. Um, and that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're not valuable. It doesn't mean that there's no hope for you. It's just finally recognizing that, hey, maybe... You know, a this fifth a day probably isn't what I need to be well, drinking. Well, and I would say know? that how I've always kind of thought of it in my head, because I have people that I diagnose them with different conditions, and it's like if I diagnose you with a condition and say that your recreational use of X, Y, or Z is going to kill you, and you continue to do it in the setting that it might kill you, then you probably have a problem. <laughs> You know, you might need to uh, see somebody else. If you right? have to be on oxygen and you're still smoking, it means it's an addiction. Mm-hmm. It's more than just usage. You know, like that's problematic usage, right? If it's actively hurting you and you can't let it go, it's a problem. Get the help you need. All right, guys and gals, uh, we're also brought to you by Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. If you find yourself in the ditch, just call Mitch, 837 2560. Everybody's antiques in El Dorado. 120 booths, 31,000 square feet. Shop them online at everybody'santiques.com. Cabin Rural Health. Learn more about what Cabin can do for you on their website, cabun.org, or call them up, 870-798-4299. And buy Stories, Floor, and Carpet. Dependable service before and after the sale. That's Stories, Floor, and Carpet, 2004, uh, uh, Lorraine in El Dorado. Dial 870-862-9446. Dr. Smith, thank you again for coming in. Thank you. All right, Doc Bryce, what you got? Well, I got Glenn Beck. All right, guys and gals, I got this and then that, and then I'll be back. Your name here. News Talk 92 KBEU Bearded. News Talk. For South Arkansas, News Talk 92 KBEU. Make up a law if it's vague. This would go for not only clean air, but it would also go for um, the uh, drugs that now, you know, you have to take them. OSHA says we're there to protect uh, workers, so now you have to take the vaccine, etc. All of the government overreach that we've seen recently and is still in the pipeline coming, this could change that course dramatically. Do I have this right, Stu? Yeah, I think... What people, uh, when you think about this particular case, you should think about it as the most important case that will affect your every everybody's daily life, right? Where, look, abortion is a huge, huge ruling, but most people aren't going to get abortions, right? I still think it's a more important case, but it's not, it's not, most people don't get abortions. Most people, I mean, statistically, most people don't carry their firearms with them. Uh, Correct. When we're talking about the Second Amendment case, which is very important. So, uh, 
I would say the abortion case is uh, a huge moral case, mm-hmm. but not one that's going to affect your everyday life, but will affect us as people and our country in the direction of our country. Mm-hmm. The Second Amendment is a very important constitutional case, um, even though it won't affect most people because, like you said, most people don't carry guns. But the same can be said about the EPA, except unlike guns, and I think this is the point you were making, unlike guns, this will touch all of our lives. This will touch us at the gas station, uh, in our place of business, at our homes, everything. Yeah, and basically this addresses essentially a workaround that the government has developed over the years, which is, hey, I really want something, and Congress won't pass a law to address it, so what if I just do it? This is something that Obama in 2000, I think it was 14, decided to do with climate change, where he said, we're just going to start regulating these power plants. And everyone said, well, you have been trying to pass legislation to do this for years and years and have been uh, unsuccessful doing it. How can you all of a sudden decide that you're going to do it? And he said, well, we looked back. We found it's like the um, uh, the Nicolas Cage movie, the Constitution movie. They like found a secret part. (laughs) of the Clean Air Act that will allow them to do this. It was it was text and written in invisible ink on the back. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And only progressives have the special glasses. Right, exactly. And so yeah, right. what they basically did is say, we have the power based on this old, old uh, part of the Clean Air Act that had never been used before to do this. And their, their argument was it was written in such a vague way that the EPA can just make up their own rules on it. And this is something we've talked about before. It's called Chevron deference, which goes back to an old Supreme Court case, which basically says, if we're not sure, if it's really vague the way the law is written, then whatever agency is tied into it can pretty much decide and write their own law, Uh, which is this is a terrible, terrible idea. It's something that is absolutely against the way the founders believed this country would work. Correct. I mean, they didn't even have any of these agencies. So we know this for a fact. Right. Right. It's absolutely unconstitutional. And that is this is the direction the Biden and Obama and Wilson administration, FDR. This is the direction they want to take the country. They want to Uh take it away from Congress and the courts. They want to just to be able to. And this is, you know, when this was first thought of at the turn of the century, this word wasn't a bad word yet. They want to just dictate they want a dictator at the top who is just an administrator. And, you know, Congress will say, yep, we think that uh, smoking is bad. And then the administration can do whatever it wants regarding smoking. Yeah. Now, obviously, the with this particular case specifically, it would have to do a lot with things like energy prices and Uh, There's tons and tons of rules, not the one that we're talking about here, but there's tons and tons of rules already in the EPA that affect your energy prices and your your freedom to spend your money the way that you you want to. The the particular rule here was put in place by Obama, but was actually taken out by Trump. So it's not currently in effect, but it addresses this overarching idea. And if you want to talk about a really relevant, really relevant uh, usage of these types of powers, it's what you saw happen to you during uh, COVID, where places like the CDC, places like uh, OSHA were able to come up with these wide ranging powers we never knew they had because they had a general dictate to prevent, uh, to help, uh, you know, the health of the, um, of the American people. And so they take that and they, they broaden it wildly. It's wh- how they tried to do vaccine mandates, but again, that was shot down in the courts. It's how they tried to uh, to uh, do the um, the the rent, uh, the eviction ban. That was another thing they uh, attempted to do right. this way. And we've seen the courts uh, eventually get angry at that as well. If that's if this gets overturned, there's a good chance that a lot of that stuff will go away. And you we, we are so used wait, to no, it. Wait, wait, right wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. wait, 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 wait. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure it will go away because the Biden administration knows these things are being overturned. They know that they're not supposed to do it. They just do it until they uh, are told to stop, and then they just continue to do it. Yeah. Until the court or somebody, Congress, somebody puts teeth into it and says, that is 
all that's already been ruled on and we're taking away your money until you stop this yeah i and, don't think it's going to stop and the, the, of course they will try and try and try the good thing is though when a when a ruling like this comes down it supposedly will set a precedent that lower courts will immediately re overturn this stuff when it's attempted you know one of the big tactics of the left is to pass a big obviously unconstitutional law let it take effect let it have effect on people so that they change their habits they change their procedures and then when it gets overturned in court well everyone's already changed already so it's not that that big of a deal the problem with that approach is that they lose the power going forward a lot of times they can only use it that one time they've tried to amend this process they did it they've done this with guns many times where they'll pass an obviously unconstitutional gun law it, as it's winding through the courts they will uh it will start taking effect people will have to give up their guns they'll have to do all these things and by the time it gets up to the supreme court they then nullify the law they t they repeal it and then say it's moot we don't even have the law anymore what are you talking about why are we going to the supreme court because they want to be able to avoid the the long-term repercussions of losing that power because it would get shut down in the, in the lower do, courts they could do that but didn't this court take this case after trump had already overturned it yeah that's why right? i'm hopeful Through executive order this is why i'm hopeful on this one yeah, because they I mean, took why this would you take it if to make a statement yeah. about this particular procedure and it's totally out of control and the point at, th at this point this is such a part of your daily life you don't even know it's going on it's all these rules that you are lived by if you own a business if you work at a business all of these rules have been implemented through the administrative state in in such a thorough way that it's become essentially the way our country operates and it was never intended to be that way by the founders uh, the progressives certainly like it but this could be a real dagger in that whole idea which would just mean that they'd have to freaking pass laws if they want to do stuff they could still do a lot of stuff that we won't like but they actually have to pass a law their argument is look these congress congressmen don't have the expertise in these particular areas they're not environmental experts so they're not going to know what to put in these laws but there's nothing preventing them asking these experts before they present the text of the law they can get expert guidance beforehand and they should get expert guidance beforehand but the, you know, they can't just implement a generic phrase and then let all these bureaucrats that are unelected and unaccountable continue to put these powers in on the american people that's not the way our government's supposed it, to operate and there is plenty of evidence from our founding fathers especially jefferson he jefferson hated these so-called experts he didn't trust he didn't trust the experts he didn't trust the judges he didn't trust the the education uh, system he just didn't trust it and most of them i mean that's why of the people for the people by the people that's why the people are involved in this we have a representative well if they're not educated enough well then they need to educate themselves or they need to call a hearing and bring all of the educated in front of them and us so we can make the decision but some unelected expert does not make a decision because they have all the facts that that's that's that goes against everything we know about self-rule mm. i'm i'm really 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 hopeful uh on on this Th this could be a real true change in the course of america at least legally but if they make all of these changes i will tell you uh not only are you going to see jane's revenge on the street and bombings at abortion or pro-life centers because that's what they've said they're going to do uh but you're also going to see a massive push to pack the court uh because the uh, progressives don't like it when they don't get their way they kick and scream until they do um, all right, we're going to come back with more court cases here in just a second. The Supreme Court is about probably 40 minutes away from uh, releasing its first decision. And these are the last 13, and quite a few of them make a huge difference. Let me tell you about the Tuttle Twins. So these books are used by homeschoolers like crazy. Um, Rebecca wrote in, she said, I'm amazed at how much my son can understand and actually uses what he's learning even at a young age. He routinely tells his older sister that he has the right to say things even if she doesn't like it because he has the right to free speech and no one could take that away, even sisters. 
I will tell you that um, I have uh, friends who homeschool and their kids are quoting the Tuttle Twins all the time. And they say things like that. They, they understand the basics of America. If we are going to save America, we have to stop learning, you know, dates and, uh, uh, and, and names of people that were in wars and start remembering the points and why we went to war, what these things meant, why were we thinking what we thought, why are the laws the way they are. And Tuttle Twins books will help you do that. Tuttle Twins, they're having a great sale right now, 35% off their books, plus they're giving away their activity workbooks at no additional cost. Huge discount off the normal price. Go to TuttleTwinsBeck.com. Get your discount, TuttleTwinsBeck.com. Keep your kids sane in a crazy socialist world. It's TuttleTwinsBeck.com. 10 seconds, station ID. I have to tell you, Stu, one of the one of the uh, cases the Supreme Court will be taking up in the next year or so has got to be this gun bill. If it passes, this thing is riddled, riddled with problems. Um, you know, if you have a juvenile record, you're prohibited from uh, buying guns. I thought, wait, I thought that was supposed to be erased when you turn 18. I thought juvenile records were were sacred right yeah i mean i think this is what they're trying to address and you can see where a problem could potentially creep up there right if someone sure. is uh, if sure. someone's put in a mental institution at 17 and a half and gets out three days before his birthday that's the type of thing that even conservatives obviously would would theoretically want to prevent uh, if someone was violent or something like that uh you'd want to prevent someone from buying a gun that's been you know mental health has obviously been the focus of of conservatives on on these things it's just a matter of like look these are these are rules there's rules and process in place for a reason and you really you have problems when you start trying to just disrupt those rules because you really want something so here's the here's the real problem with the red flag laws in this bill it incentivizes, it gives money to local, you know, groups that are going to do secret hearings. So you're not, you're not allowed, if the red flag law is being evoked uh, against you, you're not notified. They have a hearing without you. You are only granted an attorney. Let me see if I have this right here. Um, ba -ba -da -bum. You, are, you are allowed to have uh, an attorney... Uh, at the appropriate phase. So in other words, they're going to have this meeting. They're going to have this hearing. It's all in secret. Then after they decide, you get you can have an attorney, but only at the appropriate phase, and it's at your expense. So you have to prove yourself uh, innocent instead of the, the courts proving you guilty. That's not and they process. take away everything for that's not there's no due process there. Um, they also expand the definition of engaged in business. Th what they used to say is if you're selling a gun, you're engaged in business with the principal objective of livelihood and profit. Um, they've changed that now. So now it's just if you're engaged in business. Well, wait, so am I a private seller? Am I engaged in business? Because what they're going to do is they're going to make you have a license if you ever want to sell anything to anybody, mm -hmm. which will, you know, what it happens when you, you know, you have to have a hair washing license. Um, the new, There's new misdemeanor firearm uh, prohibitions. They are expanding the definition uh, of prohibiting misdemeanor uh, domestic violence. And they do it in such a way that it's pretty much a catch-all for really any kind of uh, problems. And they're empowering your employer to ask for a firearms background check prior to your employment or during your current employment, even if it has nothing to do with your job. What is that? This thing will head to the Supreme Court because this is, this is reckless and does nothing.
to stop these crimes. The Glenn Beck Program. More in a second. Um, Chrissy wrote in about her dog's experience with Rough Green. She says, we have two pointers which hunt at least four days a week, if not more. Wow. Their skin's been dry and flaky and their coat's dull and rough. Within two weeks of using Rough Greens, we've been able to see a bounce back level of energy as well as their coats being amazingly shiny and smooth and no more dry, flaky skin. 